We were on. Now it says off air. Are you sure? It's, it said we were on for a second, and then we were right back off. All right, we're on. Hey, everybody, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed, the uh, television edition, episode three. Hi, everybody. Only the third time ever for the television edition. And uh, it is uh, the 11th of April, 2012. Uh, sitting down here in my left, joining us in the studio is, of course, Glenn R.J. Willette, the owner of uh, QCE News, qcenews.com. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you for having us. It is Glenn that makes doing the television edition of Matt Connerton Unleashed possible, and now that it's a weekly show, I'm very uh, very excited to be here, Glenn, and, and thank you for, for inviting us uh, to be here. And also to my right is uh, Chris Rose from the uh, our Sunday night show, Verbal Ejaculation, and also has been on the other two episodes of Matt Connerton Unleashed television edition. Becoming a fixture we've run so far. I think we're a good three-man team. I think so. It's kind of like we'll let it large, except I'm in the middle. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, you're the you're the host. I'm the host. It's your show. Now this is our third show every week now. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you're right. It is. Yes. Because you're going to be here on every week now. Yes, well, absolutely. Will be every week, but it hasn't been like every week in the past two weeks. Right. No, but I, today, this is we'll be doing three live shows. And you're stuck in right. The now. I, 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 I was a, I was a little thrown for a second too, but then I realized what you meant. Yes, absolutely, and and thank you. And so yes, Matt Connerton unleashed the television edition every Wednesday now, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time here from the QCNews.com studio. And, of course, uh, you can also be watching this on IPMNation.com on the QCE News channel. And, uh, guys, I, I really want to talk about Rick Santorum. Um, yesterday, uh, terrible, terrible, terrible news. You think it was terrible? Well, for I, yes. those of us in the world of comedy, yes. 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 It was devastating news. Rick Santorum has left the building, proverbially speaking. Uh, he wasn't actually here in this building, but... Although he may have been at some point. Who knows? What will that do to Saturday Night Live? Oh, oh I'm yeah. sure they'll still... I Well, he may run for the nomination of vice president. I, I somehow no, doubt no. that. No. Oh, okay. That Thank doesn't you. work. Two, two, uh, two Northeasterners on the ticket, Romney wouldn't Oh, not him. just that. Is there two opposites? So, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. Well, that, though, uh, no, historically, prospective vice presidential candidates aren't necessarily above compromising their principles to get on the ticket. For example... I remember uh, uh, 1980, uh, Reagan had to defend picking uh, Bush, Bush Sr., to be the Veep because uh, Bush was, well, he'd be labeled a liberal now. Mm -hmm. uh, he was pro-choice. He, uh, uh, that's the only thing that leaps to mind, but I know this other, he was very moderate compared to Reagan. Um, Reagan, who couldn't get the nomination this day and age. Right, even Reagan, if you listen to his uh, speeches he gave on tax policy, he'd be labeled a liberal now. They'd hang him. So, uh, which is funny because he's their big conservative hero, and yep. by they I mean uh, Republicans. Um, so it's it's kind of funny, but uh, and I remember uh, seeing a clip of Reagan uh, talking about Bush in a clip defending his pick of Bush and saying, "Look, if two people agree on everything all the time, it means that one of them isn't thinking." That's right. Because mm -hmm. you know, if two people are agreeing on everything all the time, and I, I apologize to the the Rush Limbaugh ditto heads out there who think that you're supposed to believe whatever you're told to believe and never question anything because that's why that's Rush Limbaugh fans way. call themselves ditto heads because whatever Rush says, you know, they say ditto Rush or mm -hmm. mega dittos. And they wear their stupid little hats and t-shirts that they get from RushLimbaugh.com uh, saying mega dittos, therefore openly proclaiming to the world that they are incapable of independent thought. Um, yeah, good for them. But uh, I got a little bit sidetracked there. Um, but... Uh, so I don't I don't think uh, I don't think Santorum's conservatism would be a problem. Actually, I think Santorum's conservatism, if Romney were to pick him, would be good for the Romney campaign because then Romney can say, "See, see, I really, really mean it. I really am a conservative. I'm not just I'm not just pretending." Good point. Yeah, good but point. but two Northeasterners. No, I think uh, I think Romney will pick a Southern evangelical conservative. Well, um, you know. If you go to Florida, it is a southern state, but it's also still in the northeast. How do you figure? Because of all the people who moved down there from the no, north? No, it's on the Atlantic side. It's on the east. It's on the right. east side of the yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're right. It's not the yeah. north. It's on the it's east side. It's below the Bible Belt. Yeah, you would right. think that he would find someone from Texas going to a But Matt brings up a good point. There are a lot of northeasterners who moved down there That's in true. Yeah. That's true. 
Yeah, I've never even been to Florida, but I get the impression it's very much sort of a melting pot in that way. It's not really mm-hmm. a state full of Southerners, although certainly a lot of rednecks there. But how far south have you gone? Uh, I've only been as far south as uh, Maryland. Wow, yeah. you don't travel much, do you? Believe it or not, I've never been further south than that. He lives in a cave. <laughs> I do live in a cave. No one's supposed to know that, Glenn R.J. Well, I, well, as long as we don't divulge the location of the cave, because I have fine. a lot of uh, sensitive material there. And uh, by sensitive material, I mean things that the government would like to have. Porn. That too. <laughs> I, have, I have sensitive uh, uh, reading material and porn. Yeah. yeah. So um, I, 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 I will give you, I've, I've talked a little bit about how I feel about Santorum, but I'll, I'll kind of give you a synopsis. And, and I'd like to hear uh, your, your thoughts as, as well of, of both of you gentlemen. And also, if there's anyone in the chat room who has anything to say, I, uh, opening the chat room now, I, I've forgotten who at the top of the show, I apologize. Um, also, you can send us a text at 603-344-6491 if you'd like to chime in. Um, but uh, a, there, there are things I dislike about him, and there are things about him that he kind of won me over a little bit in terms of just having a sort of a grudging respect for him. What I dislike about him, of course, much too conservative for me. I would never support him uh, for any office. <laughs> I don't. I don't want him anywhere near the presidency. Uh, much too conservative. Um, I mean, you guys with your your sexual orientation, I'm sure, uh, especially are, are sensitive about his conservatism because he's uh, said some things that are very uh, homophobic. He seems very anti-gay. Yet, yeah, oddly enough, we're fans of Santorum. Anti-woman. Not Rick right Santorum. But oh, right. The yeah. other Santorum. Yes. 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 You could actually say he's also anti-woman if you wanted to go. Because some of the issues that the, he's been... Right, extremely right. Extremely pro-life. Yeah. Yes. Um, so... Extremely anti-birth control. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very, 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 very Catholic. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> well, I think it goes beyond that. Uh, uh, really, I'm, I'm a Catholic, and, and I don't believe in, in unnecessary abortions. But, uh, but we're talking here about the woman's right uh, to have contraceptives. We're, we're right. not even necessarily talking abortion. We're talking contraceptives, prevention. Right. Now, the church, you would think, would be in favor of prevention. Why have all these unnecessary kids? If abortion is so bad, why, why don't we have a plan? There is a plan. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, so you, you, you put all that together, and the guy, he comes off as not only extremely conservative, but uh, just almost like a just a little nuts but <laughs> and i say that with apologies to, 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 to gary my my uh co-host on uh, rock paper hand grenades who endorsed santorum gary hopper new hampshire mm-hmm. state rep but gary's very conservative but um but now here's where i did develop i'll i'll, I'll bring up where i have a little bit of a, bit, a grudging respect for him we'll say and then i'll i'll get into how that grudging respect that I did develop for him over the campaign over the course of the campaign uh, became eroded when I saw some things in his campaign that made me think okay well maybe I don't respect him quite as much as I thought I did what I do respect about Rick Santorum is this I think he's a true believer and I think he's genuine in the sense that I have seen him say things like the like the contraception stuff one example I have seen him say things that in my view are just politically suicidal if he were to ever by somehow manage to win the nomination and 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 by by some uh incredible circumstance actually made it to the general election things that would make him unelectable in the general election where you have to appeal to moderates you have to appeal to independents but santorum really lays it out there for you and says i'm a true conservative and this is what i believe and i'm not backing down from it regardless of whether it's smart politically or not, this is what I really think. But that I respect of him, though. He does, exactly, he yes. what he believes in, and that's yes. a good thing. Yes, He doesn't care how politically suicidal some of this stuff may be. So he's sort of the anti-Romney. You know, you have in Romney the ultimate flip-flopper, the guy who will say anything in front of anyone at any point in time to curry favor with them and go say the complete opposite five minutes later in front of a different group of people and say, what, I never said that other stuff. No, I was misquoted or or someone's spinning that. No, you don't have footage of me at a pro-choice rally. Oh, yeah, there's a footage of me at a pro-choice rally. <laughs> right, yeah. right, exactly. That was my twin clone. Yes, <laughs> oh, maybe he does. Maybe he has an evil that's, twin. That's what the magic underwear is for. Whoa. Yes, yes, so exactly. Places. So, uh, so I respect Santorum for really sticking to his guns and being 
the genuine conservative that he is and not being ashamed of it, not hiding it, but saying, this is what I believe, whether you want to come along with me or not, or whether you're going to vote for me or not, this is what I really think. Um, and he, he really was sort of the extreme of that in terms of his, not only his conservatism, but how genuine he is about that. So that authenticity, I respect that about him. And I kind of, and it made me kind of have a little bit of a soft spot for the guy, uh, even though I don't agree with him politically. What began to erode some of that for me, however, was I saw some things. Um, there's a, there was a lot of chatter about it on Facebook. I posted something. You guys are probably aware of this. When I realized that he did have some habits of the typical politician that were not so genuine, not stemming directly from his ideology, which he I think he's genuine about, but making up completely making up facts to support his ideological position, which sounded so outrageous as he was saying them that if your bullshit meter didn't go off hearing him say these things, then you're either so you're either a Rush Limbaugh ditto head who's going to believe whatever somebody like Santorum tells you, or you're just really gullible. For in, example, in, in fact, at the very end of his campaign, before he suspended it, mm -hmm. the 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 press were calling him up on some of this stuff, and yeah. he was fighting with them. Oh yeah, oh absolutely, absolutely. Um, one of the things was, you know, conservatives like to talk about how the the, the university systems and the, the colleges they're all very liberal, and if you go to college, you you're attending a liberal institution where uh, they brainwash you. Yes, and 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 turn they want to turn you into a liberal. They want to indoctrinate everyone. And then he, following that narrative, that conservative narrative about how all our colleges and all our professors and everyone, they're so liberal, and they want to make everyone liberal. Um, he, at a campaign stop, was talking about how it has gotten so bad, so bad in this country with the, the liberalism and the anti-patriotism and the, 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 the liberal, you know, because liberals all hate America. Conservatives are really, I think, believe that a lot of them, that all liberals hate America. He said, it's gotten so bad that at the University of California, in the, the university system in California, whether it's UC Davis or UCLA or wherever, you cannot take an American history course. There is no U.S. history courses taught at University of California at any of the campuses. Not one. It's not even offered. Now, and he used this as an example. Now, there's a problem with that. And the problem is... It's absolutely, completely, 100% not true. Yeah. You're saying, is, 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 that, is that a fact? That's no! A fact. Santorum's worst problem in life? Google. <laughs> He's not the Google man guy. does not believe that that exists. Right, right. But, uh, you know, first of all, they would lose their accreditation mm -hmm. if that were true. Of course, and, and I posted something on Facebook, and I said, you know, this lack of uh, U.S. history uh, courses offered at, at these schools must uh, come as a horrible shock to all the students who are currently attending these schools taking these courses. Yep. Or the professors who went who teach themselves yeah. to, to learn American history so that they could teach it at these fine Yeah, mm -hmm. they must all be going, holy, holy shit, I must be existing in some sort of alternate universe. Uh, how do I get back to reality? Or, or, or maybe because, you know, obviously these liberals at these colleges, I'm sure they take lots of drugs. Maybe the, the entire history departments at these schools are all a big hallucination. They're not real. I mean, it's insane. Even the med school at uh, the University of California in San Francisco, even the med school offers American history. So there was another instance where he was talking about socialized medicine and the evils of socialized medicine. Because obviously, if you want every American to be insured in the United States, and that means you're for socialized medicine, he was talking about how terrible that is, and he was talking about how in the Netherlands, um, because it's government-run healthcare, uh, they euthanize all their old people, and that old people are so uh, fearful that uh, they won't even go to the hospital or go anywhere near a nursing home because they assume they're going to be euthanized. Isn't that the exact plot of Soylent Green? Yeah, I was thinking yeah. that too when he was talking about that. It does sound like Soylent Green. It makes her Soylent Green and Logan's Run. Yeah, yeah. I think he I think he might have watched those recently when he came yeah. up with this. He claimed that they even wear bracelets uh, that's uh, bracelets on their wrists to say, uh, please don't euthanize me. Um, now, there's a problem with this. And by the way, a lot of Dutch people are upset with Santorum and were offended by this because 
Again, not true at all. Completely 100% fabricated. He either completely made it up himself or someone said it to him and he was gullible enough to believe it. I'm not sure which is worse, but it's completely made up. So those kinds of things, the making up of facts to support his ideology, uh, very uh, typical, very typical of a politician, and also just so, to be that brazen about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty bad. And that's that's a big difference between him and Michelle Bachman because she was known for making those blunders. Yes. In her defense, she she wasn't so brazen about it. She just didn't have a fact checker. Right. Right. Uh, but where he's coming in out and doing the. And, I know I'm making a generalization here, but making the Fox News claim yes. that everything that they say, you take as fact. Exactly. You know, you know that to be false. Yes. We just lost our picture, Glenn. I mean, that's just for one second. It's still there. Trust me. Okay. So the audio is still going? Yes. Okay. So, uh, sorry, folks. We, Hello, we've sorry. lost our camera for for the moment. They're but uh, seeing it. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just on the monitor. I'm not seeing it. Okay. I apologize. Um, there's another thing he did. You know, politicians, they like to take things that their political opponents say and take them completely out of context or leave out specific words to take what their opponents said and twist it into something that's the complete opposite and then stick it in a campaign ad or something. To, oh, yes. And, um, you know, and we've seen lots of examples of that. You know, for example, uh, I remember a while back Obama said that, you know, the U.S., you know, we've been a little lazy about going out and attracting foreign investment to the country. This is just one example. And he was talking about the U.S. government not taking the initiative in terms of free trade to go out and bring in foreign investment. But, of course, Republicans, uh, Rick Perry, for example, seized on that. He played a snippet of that in a campaign ad. Yep. And then he comes on and says, can you believe that? The president says Americans are lazy. That's pathetic, which is completely not what Obama was saying. That's just an example. Politicians do this constantly, constantly. But here's something Santorum did. Santorum did this, uh, and I actually, I actually thought it was almost kind of, uh, yeah, we still have no picture there for some reason. I actually thought this was almost humorous. It was so over the top and dumb. Um, but again, I'm sure lots of people, the Fox News crowd probably ate it up. Oh, yes. Um, someone, uh, 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 an aide uh, for the, to the Mitt Romney campaign, um, this was before the whole Etch-a-Sketch comment that uh, Eric Fernstrom made, or yes. Fernstrom, however you say his name. And uh, one, of, one of my favorite comedians now, John Fugelsang, was the one who sort of incited that whole, got him to say oh, that. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Um, uh, there was an instance where uh, uh, several weeks prior to that, some aide, and it might have been Fernstrom or somebody, made a comment uh, to someone in the media that uh, we're, we're so confident that the Romney nomination is, is so inevitable that it would take an act of God at this point uh, for Romney not to be the nominee. Act of God, which is just a figure of speech. It's an expression. Yeah. So so this gets out that this aide said this, kind of, kind of being a little cocky about it, but expressing how confident they are. Next thing I know, I see Santorum talking to a group of reporters going, oh, can you believe this? Is there no depth to which they won't stoop? Now they're claiming that Romney's going to be the nominee because God wants him to be, because it's God's will that Romney be the nominee, when that's not what the guy said. No. That's not a, he said an act of God. It's a figure of speech, for Christ's sake. Besides, doesn't no God pun want, intended. Yeah, doesn't God want Santorum to win? Yes, well, it would make sense. Well, of course, yes. So uh, he wanted Rick Perry to win at one point, too. Yeah. God has to pick a, pick a front runner and he stick with him. Bush to stay in for two terms. Of course, of course. Well, and what God wants, God gets. Yes. Uh, that's a Roger Waters song, actually. But um, so, so it, it just it was so weird. You know, Santorum going, ah, oh, can you believe that he said that? Something, sorry. Oh, yeah. that's that's all right. Uh, uh, Chris is uh, adjusting something on a, uh, a technical level here. Yes, sorry. Looking at the totally camera. Sorry. Quite just all right. Case, we're still seeing blackness on our screen. I don't understand why, because I just turned on mine. And Okay. okay, so you just saw my face really up close. Well, I will uh, I will refresh uh, the screen here on yeah. my computer. Maybe That's I just need is. to refresh it. Um, so, so uh, I definitely saw some behavior coming out of the uh, coming out of Rick Santorum that kind of uh, kind of diminished my uh, my view of him a bit. The the grudging respect that I had developed for him. 
Um, another thing that I do respect about him, though, is, uh, you know, oh, there we are. Okay, so Hello. it is working. Um, you got to love the underdog. You got to root for the underdog. It has been fun watching Santorum play the underdog, um, play David to uh, the Goliath. That is the Romney campaign. The Romney campaign outspending Santorum yep. in several of these states, outspending him 20 to 1, 30 yeah. to 1, and Santorum still performing respectably. Santorum winning 10 primaries. It's fun to watch the underdog take on the guy who's got all the money, who everyone assumes is going to be the nominee. And and to watch him make Romney sweat it out, I love that. I've always loved that. That I remember back in 92 um, when Bill Clinton was the presumptive nominee for the Democratic nomination for president. And Jerry Brown, the guy who nobody expected, Jerry Brown at that time, former governor of California, now again the governor of California, yep. when he... Uh, he, the guy who everyone thought you know, he's too liberal, he's going to be out early, kind of the opposite of with Santorum, Santorum being ultra conservative, Brown at that time, and probably still is the yeah, yeah. uber liberal, whereas Clinton was trying to be the moderate. Uh, everyone thought, oh, Brown, he's uh, this is he's washed up. He's old news. You know, little did we know then. Um, but he was the last guy standing aside from Clinton. He hung in there till the end. And toward the end, he actually started winning primaries. Mm -hmm. And we all knew still Clinton was going to be the nominee, but it was fun. And I liked Clinton, but it was still fun watching Brown make him sweat it out. It was cool. You know, I like to see that. I think it's healthy for the whole political process, to be honest. So it, it was fun watching Santorum play that role, forcing Romney to discuss issues Romney wanted nothing to do with. Romney didn't want to talk about contraception. Nope. It's because of Santorum that Romney completely lost control of the message, being forced to talk about these social and cultural issues. Romney would love to shut up about all that. Mm -hmm. Romney doesn't want to talk about abortion. He doesn't want to talk about anything except the economy. If, if Mitt Romney had his way, that's all he would talk about is the economy, maybe some foreign policy. You know, the Republicans like to talk big and tough about Iran, how they'd solve Iran, because in their minds, it's not a complicated problem at all. Um, so it's been fun it's been it, senator santorum i know there's no chance you'll ever see this or hear my voice but i just want to put it out there thank you thank you senator rick santorum uh thank you to all of the cast of characters it looks like it's it's pretty much a done deal for romney but thanks to all of you all of you crazy colorful republicans who have made this such a fun ride Thank you, Michelle Bachman. Thank you, Rick Perry, who it turns out apparently there's a story that he was on painkillers, and that's why <laughs> yep. he was so loopy at the debates. Uh, thank you. Uh, who else? Who, uh, let's thank see. Bachman, Perry. 999. Oh, yes. Thank you, Herman Cain. Herman Cain. Tons of laughs. Um, uh, and the, the one that I really, truly liked was John Huntsman. I thought he yeah. had well, a chance. Well, yes. But I, he didn't give us the, the comedy gold. Right. I'm not says. I'm not going to thank John Huntsman because I was not at any point entertained by him. I appreciated his candidacy because he was my favorite out of the, the main players. Yes. I uh, the most moderate, the most uh, he didn't have a gay husband like Michelle Bachman. Right, yes, exactly. Oh, wow. Hordes of women like Herman Cain. I wonder if backstage at any of those debates if Marcus ever like kind of hit on uh, John Huntsman a little I bit. I bet he did. Because Huntsman's a good-looking dude, and, you know... Like, good debate, good debate. Give me a hug. Yeah. No, no, Mar no. no Mark is not a hug unless it's 10 when, seconds. When, yes. When, Chris, was it uh, proven as fact that uh, Michelle Bachman's husband is totally a gay? We think that he may be because of his reaction, but... Have you seen him? Oh, I know I've okay. seen him, but he's, <coughs> we got to be careful when we oh, talk. That's, that's Marcus. <laughs> Marcus is getting even with me. Oh, come on, Glenn. I mean, you're bisexual. You know, I mean, I'm straight. I understand. I'm, I'm straight, and the dude sets off my gaydar. Yeah. When the straight guy knows, but then I you, understand you... all that, but it's not, it's not necessarily a fact. Yeah, true. It's all conjecture. It's all conjecture. He could just be very, 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 very flamboyant. Yeah, yeah really, right? I mean, I... he's gay. He's definitely gay. He likes he also is gay. He, he likes what? He's probably he got a dick in his mouth right now. He likes, he likes, he likes men. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Nope. But uh, no, so thank you to this amazing uh, Newt Gingrich who continues to entertain me. Thank you. Thank you for staying in. I hope you stay until the, till the convention. Ron Paul, always a great time. I love Ron Paul. Not that I support him, but love the guy. This has been a great, great cast of characters, this, uh, this Republican uh, nomination quest. Now, how come uh, since Newt has filed for Chapter 11, 
seven. Or chapter seven, I should say. His campaign, not not. Well, yeah, he hasn't filed tank, for the think yeah. tank, right? But uh, how come that the the press? You think they would have made much more of that, and they haven't. Yeah, so I haven't not heard they, much of it well, either. I was going to say, he's not a big candidate. He's not a anymore. big candidate, but mm, he's not yeah. a... He's not number one. He's not the majority candidate yeah, anymore. So he thinks, he seems to think that he's going to benefit from Santorum leaving, but I disagree. It's going to be uh, Romney, Mitt Romney and Ron Paul. I agree it's that... Uh, I him. would love to see Ron Paul win a few primaries right now. That would be great. Uh, that would be Do you wonderful. still think he might run as a third party? I don't think so. I don't think he will because, because he, of his son. he doesn't want to screw it up for his kid, Rand right. Paul. Um, so, Glenn, we were talking a little bit, too, before the show. Uh, you and I agree, and I'm curious to hear what you think, Chris. Uh, good move for Santorum to get out for, for his own sake? Because Glenn and I both uh, feel that uh, because of the Pennsylvania primary coming up and because of the very real danger that he was going to lose Pennsylvania – for his own political future, because he's a young guy. Yeah. He's only 48. 40, 40, 40, 48? He, he's 48. He's the youngest out of yeah, anybody he left. Hell, he's 20 years younger than Newt Gingrich. Mm -hmm. So he's he could run again in 2016 if Romney loses this time, which he probably will. He will. I, I'm just yeah. He will. Probably. So do you, do you think good move? I think it's I think it's good move where he lost his double-digit lead in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe, I, I truly do believe that he... He wants to focus on the health of his daughter. Yes, yes. his daughter, he's Bella. He's a very who's family very man, and I respect him for that. He's, he's, yeah. He is a good family man. He, so he has a lot going on, both personally and politically, mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah, it's a good move. Still would have liked to have seen him stayed in. Yeah. I wish I wish nothing but the best for his daughter. I Absolutely. Wish her health. Definitely. Um, Definitely. It's just, it's kind of a shame that she had to get sick at this time because maybe there was a chance that he could have stayed in. A little bit longer, yeah. And he yeah. could have. I think he was losing a lot of focus as well on the political front because he was yeah. focusing on the Lots personal side. Right. Plus, he was getting a lot of pressure from his own people. To, to, to oh yeah, yeah. Go and away. the Republicans are are vicious. Yeah, you think the Democrats because, are vicious? Because <laughs> if you don't pay attention to them and do what they say, right, uh, they will fire back. Right. You got to fall in line. Um, the the other thing too, I, I I think may have contributed to his decision is it was very obvious to me that he was physically exhausted. Yes, I'd been noticing for a couple of weeks whenever I would see him on television, he looked very tired. And when it really came to a head, my own personal observation: two Sundays ago, excuse me, I don't know if you guys saw this. I saw him on Meet the Press. Uh, he wasn't in the studio with David Gregory. He was being interviewed via mm -hmm. satellite from wherever he was campaigning, and the guy looked so tired. And I noticed he had a slow blink. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you blink your eyes. It's a quick yeah. thing. You, you ever notice when somebody's very tired, sometimes their eyes, when they blink, they'll actually, like, stay closed for a mm -hmm. couple seconds. Mm -hmm. Like, they're trying to stay awake. That's what I saw Santorum doing. He had the slow blink going. It looked like he was literally trying to stay awake. Yeah. And it's also a sign that you're you're also trying to formulate your thoughts yeah. as you're tired. And yeah. You close your eyes for a second so that you can see the visualize the words that you want to say yeah he yeah. was very clearly exhausted i really think he made a good move because because of what romney was going to do in pennsylvania he was going to defeat him just by mm -hmm. spending that 21 to 30 percent to one yeah and and the double digits were already against his side right now it only gave him a couple of weeks to catch up and 24 right. around the corner and then he was playing on texas and texas results are not coming around the way he really wanted them to so this was a good time for him to quit. Yes. I wouldn't say quit. He only suspended his campaign. Yes. and They're smart about that, aren't yes, they? Yes, yes. And for anyone who doesn't realize the difference, because no one ever quits their campaign anymore. No, no one ever says anymore, I'm, we're folding up the tent yeah. and we're going home. Suspend their they suspend. The key word is suspend. And the reason they do that is because as long as they suspend their campaign, the campaign technically does continue to exist in some form, and they can continue to raise money. I was going to say, it's the super PACs. And that's one way to pay mm -hmm. off their bills sometimes. <clears throat> exactly. Does that mean yes. Herman Cain w w might come back? Because he suspended his campaign. I would no, love he, it if he did. He has talked about it. Maybe I might surprise them all, but I don't see that. Nine 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 plan. Yeah, I don't see that happening. Order breadsticks for nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll um, tell you. I'll tell you what, though. I think uh, you know the 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 reason that um, we've we've seen some of what we've seen this campaign cycle in terms of. Uh, you know, I mean, Romney still, I, I think now still the math isn't there necessarily for him to get to 1144 by the time of the convention. He has a better chance. But now. I think it's a formality anyway. I mean, he'll, he'll have a plurality, so it doesn't really matter. There's 1160 left 
delegate between now and the yeah. rest of the rest of the group. And so if he were to, he'd have to almost win them all or pretty close right, to Right, right. Um, and most of the states now, the delegates are, are uh, allocated proportionally based on vote. It's not winner take all. The, the party changed it. Uh, now only 25% of the states are winner take all. Well, I believe in that. I do too. It's much a, more of a fairer campaign. I think it's better for the, the process. Yes. I think it's I think it's healthier. Um, There's nothing wrong in stretching the process because right. you're allowing people to actually have a voice, and that's what democracy is all about. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So Romney um, Romney will be the nominee. Um, I don't think we're going to have a broker convention or anything like that. Um, oh, the fun's all gone, huh? Well, the, the fun isn't all gone. Uh, I do think Obama will win re-election, but there are some variables. It's going to uh, be close, though. It will be close. It's too close to call. Will the Supreme Court declare Obamacare to? Um, yeah, actually, I was going to say Obama or Romney, but it's Obamacare because he faced it off of right. yeah, Romney's right. plan. But will they declare the entire thing unconstitutional? But even though they did, I don't think so. What that, does that do to Massachusetts? But if they do, because we do have Nothing. some very conservative judges say that? who do not like yeah. some some of the big portions yeah. of, of Obamacare. Mm -hmm. So if they decide it's unconstitutional, will President Obama have a leg to stand on during the debates, or is that the one thing that Romney, who really shouldn't be uh, saying anything about it? First, I don't think they're going to they're going to declare the entire thing unconstitutional. They're going to declare parts of it. The mandate the is mandate, the big yes. sticking point. And if they do that, according to the Massachusetts Constitution, their state, their Commonwealth Constitution, it's similar to the U.S. Constitution, and someone could challenge it in their courts and say that. Uh, Romney's mandate when he made it law for Massachusetts, and that could go against him as well. If you look at the two plans, I mean, they're basically alike. Mm -hmm. So where does the change? Well, I'll tell you what, though. I, I will do something very unpopular here, and, and I, I have a sense that you guys both may disagree with me on this. I don't know. be curious to hear what you think. Um, okay, we've t we talked about how Romney is the ultimate flip-flopper, mm -hmm. and he is. And, and he is a true flip-flopper. It's one thing. I mean, some people change their minds over time. I certainly don't have all the same positions I did five years ago or even a few years ago necessarily. Mm -hmm. Facts change. Right. And, and yep. you know, we, we evolve and we grow. Mm -hmm. But Romney is, is very obviously the extreme of that. So it's obviously a put, a put on. And he is Worse a true flip-flopper. Oh, absolutely. Yes. The worst I've ever seen. But the single biggest flip-flop that people nail him on is what? It's health care. Probably with abortion being a close second because that's very important the to cultural conservatives. Yes. Right. But now, how about but, immigration? He's flip flopped. Oh, oh, he's flip flopped on everything. Yeah. Well, but, he needs he needs his yard clean. So <laughs> that's right, absolutely. He's a pragmatist, if nothing absolutely. else. But the biggest thing, the biggest, the single biggest flip flop is is healthcare. I and this is very unpopular when uh, an unpopular position, because both uh, Democrats and Republicans pile on him about this. But I will defend him on that. I think the distinction that he draws between Romney care and Obamacare is correct. It is the one thing I will defend Romney on. Is that the state versus the federal level? Yes. I, no, I actually I agree with that. I, do you? Good. Yes. But what do you think, Glenn? I think that's a very important distinction. It is an important distinction, but I still maintain that if, if the, if the uh, Supreme Court, the United States Supreme Court, were to make, it make the uh, Obamacare unconstitutional on the mandate, Mm -hmm. Because the Massachusetts Constitution is very similar, some include even today. And Romney care, that right. mandate exists in today, the state of Massachusetts. Even though it's, Massachusetts. it's been in effect for years and say, you know what, I'm challenging it. And if the Supreme Court of Massachusetts were to take it up, they could do the same thing and that would create what? There's no, there's no more right. leverage there. It's right. the same thing. I don't think that would happen, though, for two reasons. One is I think the state's rights argument, which is what would immediately come up if someone did challenge that, the response would be, well, what about states' rights? We have the right to do what we want in our state, regardless of what's happening federally, as long as uh, there isn't a federal law that supersedes the state law. So I think that would be the defense. And the other reason is um, Romney Care is very popular. It is in Massachusetts. In, in Massachusetts. No Massachusetts residents it and polls. solves a lot of problems. You, yeah. You'll, but I believe, Glenn, to be correct, too, that you'll find some big naysayers. Oh, sure. Someone's going to do it. We all know that. Yeah. yeah. They'll hire their lawyers. Definitely a liberal just to make the contradiction. Right, right. It could be, or it could be a conservative. It could be, it could but be I suspect it would probably be more of a liberal, to, just to make that controversy. But I don't get me wrong, with on the federal level, I think that healthcare certainly needs to be fixed, and this yes. was a good step towards it. The whole 
pre-existing condition condition aspect has always been bullshit in my mind. Right, and even conservatives agree with that piece of and, the legislation. And I worked yeah. for Unite Healthcare for six months, and that portion, when I was looking at people's policies, where, okay, you have a pre-existing condition, so we have to go back six months if you've been treated, yeah. or mm -hmm. in the past 12 months, yeah. or if you have dependents that have the issue, you have to go back two years. If they've been treated for this mm -hmm. condition, then you can't be treated for it for another year if you're buying your insurance yeah. right now. It, to me, it's bullshit. It's, it is. Yeah. It is. But I mean, there are other portions as well that I don't agree with mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, because of the industry that I work in yes. where you have to use your tax-free medical savings funds and you have to get a prescription for Tylenol, for over-the-counter. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. Far. So you spend yeah. 25 bucks yeah. copay to go see your doctor to get a prescription for, for Tylenol. Tylenol. Yes. It's, that part is ridiculous. Now, that sounds like real government, doesn't it? Yeah. But you know if you got to remember that the, the, the GOP party have a, a, a madness of their means. If the, <laughs> I like that madness of their means, yes. The, the, the Democrats do too. They yes. don't think, oh, yes. think otherwise. Yes. Uh, we but, all have our agendas. That's right. If if some more than others. <laughs> yeah. But oh, if, oh boy. If, Wait till you got. Oh, never mind. If, if the United States Supreme Court decides in June to make the mandate unconstitutional, the wrong. The Rand Paul people, the state senator from uh, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. uh, has Wisconsin. already made it very clear that that's their wish because then they can say, well, you are mandating people to pay Medicare every week when they get paid and Medic uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and, and Social, Social Security. Security. And that's right. how they claim on saying we can now defeat that and stop the mandate. Isn't that a state's right to, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just thinking of, of looking at my pay stuff. I know I'm paying for Medicare and Social Security. You have to pay for but it. But Medicaid I'm paying for as well in New Hampshire? Well, because I thought um, Medicaid was a state mandate because it, it was. It is a state mandate, but all 50 states have a form of Medicaid. and so We do, right. but whether or not we're paying the, into it the only difference through that our payroll. The only or, difference that we're doing it is, is, is because we don't have an income tax, you're not paying that way. Right. Mm -hmm. Our taxation comes in other forms. Right, they get but you your are money. still paying for it. Right, oh, right. I know, I know. But, but it's, it's mostly Medicaid. I know it's Medicare. And uh, it's mostly Security. Medicare and the Social Security. So but I see where you're going. The, these entitlement programs that have existed for years and years, and they're all are, mandates. They are safety nets for us in later years. Yes. Much like a 401k, but a 401k mm -hmm. is optional. Do we want to put towards right. our retirement? Well, Social Security. Once you hit that certain age or you hit disability, mm -hmm. you're going to start getting these checks because you're not going to be able to work anymore. And let's face it, most companies after 65 years, they don't want you working there right. anymore. Yeah. So, You but, bring up a, a good point, but, Glenn. I, I, I had not thought of it that way. And frankly, I haven't heard anyone else really express that either. That Well, I know that these Rand are Paul These are mandates. You're, he's, you're, he's talking about that's how he's going to dismantle right. those programs because of the mandate. Right, because and, like yeah, with, it's with, definitely a good point. Yeah, yeah, you don't have a choice to, to pay for Social Security. That's coming out of your check whether yeah. you want it to or not. But then you got to reverse I that. I hadn't considered though. that. You have to reverse that because when you take the when George Bush created No Child Left Behind, even though the government didn't pay for it, the federal government didn't make us pay for it as, as a federal. It's all states and local, mm -hmm. pretty much basically. It's still a mandate. Right. And and I still think that in that case you would you could easily prove that the states has their own constitutional right. To dictate themselves. Now, where it is different, though, and this is the distinction that I think uh, someone arguing ag against it would make, and I, I guess money. I and I don't like the the mandate for healthcare, so I guess I would make this argument myself, is that uh, in this instance you're you're being forced to buy a product, you're you're being and it's the first time in the history, in the history of the country that the federal government has forced you to buy a product that you can do without, you know. Um, now, I, I think we have to be careful. I'll tell you why. Uh, for example, in the local community throughout the entire country where we have our schools, it's always been local control should be number one. Then the state got involved. Now the right. feds are involved. Yeah. But the point is, who's paying the bill? The local property taxpayer. Right. Now, the seniors who no longer have kids or the young people who aren't married, or are not necessarily married, don't have kids, but still pay the tax. So when they start making a, a, a mandate unconstitutional, that could change a lot of stuff. It could be a very slippery slope. It could, yeah. be, very, it could, yeah. it could be the definition of destroying our country. Who knows? Yeah. We have to be careful. Now, I want to I see something here. Um, okay, so I, I, I defended Romney 
on that, and it turns out you guys agree with me. He's so I, happy. I didn't go the way I thought it was going to. Oh, I, was hoping, I was hoping for an argument. Sorry. That's, so, uh, it just happens to well, be that's, one. That's, we, that's all right. I, that's I because we're true independents and we are honest. Well, that's true. All three of us are independents. But we're, if you tell me that <laughs> magic underwear is, is real, I will punch you in the face. I'm not a Mormon, so uh, okay. I, there, there, no, no punching yeah. necessary. Damn it. Um, Our audience is expecting a smack. It's funny, I saw a film today, a nine-minute film on the internet that somebody sent me. And it has to do with one of the universities in Massachusetts. Uh, some religious religious university. I forget what it's is called. It, are you sure it's not Boston College? Because they are a Christian. It's Boston College, yes. yes. Okay. Boston College. The majority of the Mormons that go there admit to be, a lot of them admit to be gay, but the Christian that Christian college is against it. I'm saying... Wow, and they're coming. And they made a film. They're actually going after after the college. Wow, and I'm saying, wow, it was stronger than I thought it was. No kidding. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to shift gears a little bit because I'm going to defend someone else on something, uh -huh. and I want to see how you guys react to this. I think this will this may garner more of an argument. Let's let's see let's see what happens. This is a fun game. Yes, I'm going to defend Rick Santorum. <laughs> okay, again on yes, I'm going to defend yeah, him. I'm ready for my spit take. I'm going to defend him on this contraception issue. And this is my defense, and it's a simple one. Because, of course, Santorum started this whole thing. It really all began with Santorum. That all of San Santorum is anti-women, anti-women's rights, and whatnot. And then that spread to the GOP is anti-women's rights and all that. I wouldn't say it began there. I think it began in New Hampshire the Thursday before our primary when George Stephanopoulos asked that question. Right. And Romney said... Leave it alone. There's no problem. And Santorum says, hey. Well, okay. Right. Well, but, but Santorum has been the genesis of a lot of... Well, actually, the, the real genesis, really, if you want to really go back, was Peter uh, Gabriel. having to do with, yes, <laughs> Peter Gabriel. And, and I actually enjoy his solo work more than, than mm -hmm. Genesis. But uh, uh, was uh, the, the Obama administration fumbling the whole thing with the, the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. not That's wanting true. to pay for the... Yeah contraception but um but then santorum coming out with his position i think is what what made everyone think that uh republicans hate women or something which i think is an overreaction uh, but I, I am going to defend uh santorum on this there is a difference between saying expressing what you truly believe as a catholic as what I would call Roman Catholics, because I've always said there's two kinds of Catholics. You have Roman Catholics and American Catholics. Roman Catholics aren't necessarily Catholics that live in Rome. They're just Catholics who actually believe in Catholicism. American Catholics are Catholics who pretend to believe in Catholicism, but really do whatever the hell they want. So uh, Santorum is really a Roman Catholic. There is a difference in expressing, and by the way, this is not a defense of his position. I mean, I like contraception. I like sex. I like not having children. I was say, didn't you just say you were going to defend something? Yeah. Right, but yeah. I will defend Santorum because there is a difference between saying that this is what you believe as a Christian, as a Catholic. There's a big difference between saying that and saying, this is what I want for the country. This is what I'm going to push legislatively. Santorum has never said, to my knowledge, that he wants to outlaw contraception or necessarily make it more difficult for women to have access to contraception. No, you would. Hmm? You would. Ah, but how do you know that, Glenn? Because of his perception. But it is a perception. Uh, but yeah, his I voting mean, record. It's not a fact. His We're getting voting, back to the kind of we know Marcus yeah, Bachman is gay. Right. It's, right. it's not a fact. You're you're correct. It's not a fact. But the way that he ran his campaign, if anyone was going to be, if he would have been the president, he would be the one that would probably go after it. Out of all the other candidates, because well, of it, because of his belief, I'm gonna I'm actually gonna side with Glenn on this. That based on but what I've no heard evidence. come out right. of his mouth, uh, that I would tend to believe he that would be he would repeal yeah. any sort of contraception, uh, I guess mandate that Obama would put into place. That I think he would say, nope, nope. Whatever he said about women's contraception. We're taking it back. The Catholic Church has every right to say. And then you got to remember that he and voted Catholic in favor of some of these. Lawyers can say that they they are not going to put this into their insurance. Policy. Oh, I don't disagree yeah. with that. But, but I'm saying in, in the broader sense, would he try to outlaw contraception? Well, Just in, oh, in, in, in the general, general sense, because general. that seems to be what people are saying about him. I well, think again, if he I was think president, he could run on a platform of it. But he once was he was elected, well, remember, once you're elected, you're not really the boss anyway. Right. <laughs> Because, because his voting record does not bear out that he would. Because of the money. 
He admitted that when he got in trouble with Romney at some of these debates. He said, but mm -hmm. you voted for this? Yes, because I wanted the I wanted the budget to pass and I wasn't there. Because politics these, is a team yeah, sport you, was his You excuse, added all yes. these things in there and I just played the team sports. You're and right. He, yeah. he would hope and there's so much reality that, that speaks to the opposite of what I'm about to say, but you would <laughs> hope that he would listen to science and to medical research that shows that condoms and contraception prevent not only prevent pregnancy but disease. disease right female contraceptives have been shown to reduce the risk of ovarian cancer it's like mm -hmm. you would hope he would listen to that but with his with his belief and the fact that he has eight children eight children does he have eight yeah. he's a good catholic eight and one yeah. was yeah. one was my mother had 12 you know <laughs> we're good catholics uh, <laughs> He he could put easily push for you know no we're not going to put condoms in high school anymore we're gonna uh, I don't think condoms should be allowed free condoms should be allowed in bars. What I don't. But then again, it's if you own your establishment, you can do whatever the hell you want. Right, right. There's, right. there's nothing. But, but he's not a libertarian, so no, he's not gonna not. he's what, not gonna pull condoms off the shelf. No, but right. And here's an interesting fact because I work in the flex medical the the flexible spending account field. Condoms are still eligible with your tax-free benefits. They are to do you can day. still yeah. You can still purchase contraceptives mm -hmm. in your tax-free funds. What, what I don't understand, guys, is that... Don't need a prescription if, for if, them either. If, right. If you were, yeah. to, if you were <laughs> to look at what we call reality and sensibility and how we live our lives today, mm -hmm. you talked about people evolving and growing up. Well, society has changed in the last 10 years. I mean, we do things, look, we do things a lot differently. Yes, and the, uh, and the medical is more advanced. So, even though I'm a strong Catholic, and I am a strong Catholic, I do not believe in, in 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 abortion, but I do believe that it's a woman's right. Yes, I always have. Yes, and I do and that's believe a, that's a good argument. It is. Nobody is for abortion. That's right. Nobody is not in general. Right. Why, why would I would they? say the majority the of majority, us who yeah. are pro life and pro choice, nobody wants to get an abortion, and the three of us can't even get one. So <laughs> our, our opinion, and that's what it has to be, is an yes, opinion because right, we'll yes. never have one. Right. But nobody really wants an abortion. But there are instances where it should be allowed. If your father rapes you and your baby is going to grow up to be an incest baby and you know we've seen, I'm, I'm sure, plenty of documentaries and movies like Deliverance, the product of incest. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, he, he has 12 or, toes, but he's a good swimmer. Or if you had a choice that... <laughs> The, the child will die or the mother will die and she's got kids at the house that she needs to take care of. Right. You, you know, you have to, it's called being logic. But some of these candidates like Santorum doesn't have that logic. It's, he believes what he believes and there's nothing that's going to change your mind. Yeah. The thing He's is not open-minded is what I'm saying. Right. Well, the thing is the pro-life people, th this is, um, uh, <laughs> they, they f call people who are pro-choice. They don't call us pro-choice. They call us pro-abortion. And they frame it that way intentionally because it makes it sound like we're for abortion. Like, right. like, look, I'm, I'm pro-choice. I'm not pro-abortion. Pro, to call me pro-abortion, it actually offends me mm -hmm. when pro-life people say that. It's not like I'm going up to pregnant women out on the street yeah. and saying, hey, make sure you abort that fetus. And it's clever of them. It is right. clever Oh, it is. Them. It's a, it's a, it's a good it way to frame it politically. It right. Does. It does. But the truth is... I would like to make abortion as rare as possible in There's this no country. There's no question. I agree with you there. I just don't think, right, I just don't think the right way to do it is to outlaw it. I don't want to, because when you, look what, look what it was before abortion was legal. I don't want to go back to a time, if you were to outlaw abortion today, I don't want to go back to a time when women were perforating their uteruses with coat hangers. To abort a child. I'm uh, sorry oh, to be graphic about it, but that yeah, but no, that's no sterilization. That's what used to go so on. Where was the health in that? Right. So, so if you really want, this is what I would say to the pro-lifers: if you want to end abortion, you you need education. You need, and by the way, I actually do support. And this is something. Maybe you guys will, will argue with me on this. I don't know, but um, because even though I'm pro-choice, I do support some of the pro-life legislation that, for example, here in New Hampshire, we had a guest tonight on Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades, um, Kurt I Wempler, I'm not sure how to say his last name, um, who, is, who is pushing, uh, he's a head of New Hampshire Right to Life. Mm -hmm. Now, the end game for him is to outlaw abortion. That's his end game, and I don't agree with him on that. But some of these bills, like, for example, uh, he's pushing legislation to um, uh, that abortion providers have to give women some sort of counseling on 
what the uh, possible after effects of an abortion are, how, how it uh, can affect you mentally, psychologically. You know, a lot of women, after they have an abortion, they have a very rough time in some way, but you know, both physically and, and mentally and emotionally. That's true. I believe that a child under the age of 18 should have a parent accompany them. I agree I as well. I don't that either. But I will yes. tell you that these same people who think that way, again, are not talking reality at times. For example, of all these people who can't stand abortions, I can't stand it either, but you, you have to have reality. Well, they will, instead of... Instead of adopting a child that needs to be adopted, which in this country is damn near impossible, that's right. which is why now, so many people Now, if you're a woman cross, and you can't carry a child and you're ocean. married to a man and you want a child, you would think that the next best thing is an adoption? No. Instead, they'll say, we'll have a surrogate mother. Well, okay. There's a child already in need there. Right, right. There's thousands of children. So, in this where's country? reality yeah. when it comes to that? Yeah. And then you have to realize that's that. That's a good point. Contraceptions are, to, in this day and age, aren't only used to prevent abortion. Right. They are actually part of our medical health problem solving. Uh, it you know, the lady spread of HIV and AIDS and, yes. and other STDs. And who, who's that lady we're talking about? That if she doesn't take her hormones or well, there was um, Sandra Fluke, who's. Uh, Oh, she's a slut. She's no, a slut and a s- prostitute. But, no, she was <laughs> she was advocating for one of her friends who had ovarian cysts. Ovarian, there and that's it. what she was trying to fight for. So and it's not just for which the committee did not allow her to speak yeah. right. at the time. Right. And when she did spoke, she was called a slut. Yeah. Yes. Whatever happened to that? He's kind of died in the window. Well, he had to apologize, and it, you know that kind of thing blows He's, over. And, uh, well, but go, some I mean, of the commercials have not come back yet. Though. No. No, that's true. Um, He'll survive, I heard though. Mike Huckabee is now going into radio markets trying to compete against Rush Limbaugh's ratings right now. That's what I heard. Oh, so he's going to give up to, his TV or do both? Uh, he's going to do both. He he's go, wants to go on the radio market to take away some of Rush Limbaugh's. He has more audience. sensibility, oh. though, I would think. But going back to, to the initial he point me. here about pro-choice, pro-life, mm-hmm. I'm pro-choice in the ex- in, to the extent that I think a woman should be should have the right to choose in these circumstances that yes, yes. of incest of rape I rape is one of the most horrible crimes it's very violent yes. and a child is just going to be that stark mm-hmm. reminder right it's the physical bruising it's mm-hmm. the, the mental yes. bruising constant reminder yeah, yeah. but no. certainly I don't think I think life is precious I don't it is very precious from it, birth from, I don't think from conception yeah I believe that well be careful well I, I have no I, problems I, with I, that I used to say that too until I, I learned about the difference and it's because of this whole contraception kerfuffle that has happened I learned about the difference between uh, uh, conception and implantation and so forth if you say conception Glenn, then, then uh, birth, then the pill. You can't use the pill. The pill prevents implantation. Do I have this right? You, you, you so say what? that. Do you know? There's, there's a difference between conception and implantation, and like the you're, whole personhood. You're amendment. talking about the after pill. No, I'm talking about regular. Well, the morning after the pill morning is after just after an pill. extremely high now dose of the pill. Ask yourself, why are some Catholic medical hospitals giving the after pill when they're against abortion? Because their when, excuse is. For nausea. Oh, come on. It's baloney. Well, they're, but but they should. The, the morning after pill. There is a difference, Glenn. A lot of people don't, well, some people don't realize this who, because they confuse the morning after pill with RU486, which is the abortion pill. The morning after pill does not cause an abortion. The morning after pill does not cause an abortion any more than the pill does. All the morning after pill is, is it's an extremely high dose of, of the, uh, of the pill. It, pre- it prevents implantation. It stops the sperm from being implanted. That's correct. Right. So there's there's no abortion there. But I mean, there are pharmacists in this country, however, who are so wrapped up in their, not even their own ideology, they won't they won't dispense the, yeah. the morning after pill because, they, oh, it, it, it causes an abortion. Well, no, it doesn't. And if you're a freaking pharmacist, you should know the difference. Mm-hmm. I'm not a pharmacist. I know the difference. Sorry, I get really worked up about that. It frustrates the hell out of me. It is ir- it is reckless and irresponsible if you're right. a pharmacist to say, no, I'm not going to dispense. Some 16-year-old kid comes to you because and she's worried about being pregnant because a condom broke because her boyfriend didn't, her 16-year-old boyfriend didn't know what he was doing. And, you know, now you got a problem. Oh, well, I'm Christian and uh, I can't give you this uh, morning after pill because I am i don't know the difference between this and the abortion pill. I don't think RU486 is even legal in this country, is it? I don't believe so. I don't believe that the FDA ever approved that. No. I, I remember there was, there was talk, but I don't think it ever happened because it's so controversial. Mm-hmm. 
Less First of all, our, our mm. kids today are being forced for up too fast, and where it allows, where it allows, our con, or not our constitution, our government now is so involved in our bedrooms and in our family lives that they tell us how to raise our kids, mm -hmm. and you wonder why there's so much disrespect in the new generation and 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 behavioral problems because. We're not able to raise the kids the way we used to and teach them some discipline. Yes. And that's, that's another thing to, to think about with the, the pro-choice, pro-life debate is these families that have multiple children, that they live on welfare. They, there is a – studies do show that there's a good chance that they will grow into poverty mm -hmm. and crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Would it be easier for the mother just to have aborted the child? No rhyme or reason, not incest, not rape, mm -hmm. just – Oh, I like fucking my husband or fucking my boyfriend. And use the pill. And, right. But they, they're reckless. They don't, it's called they're reality. just being reckless. It's called reality. Use the pill. That's where my intellect and my emotions kind of differ because right. it's but like... But when people like Santorum, you can't tell them that. Well, intellectually, we know that the system, the adoption system, the foster family system in this country is broken. It's mm -hmm. definitely broken. Um, but again, it's like, it sh it's your fault. Shouldn't, shouldn't you raise this child and try and raise it to be the best child that you can? Mm -hmm. But these people are idiots. I know. They're how many people? How many Americans go to Russia or or, or uh, Africa, other Korea, nations, China. Korea, to get their child? Uganda. We have all maybe, these maybe children Malaysia? in America. Malaysia, yeah. where, where all did, these uh, children in America that need to Madonna, be adopted. Angelina, get and we're going to go get them from around the globe. Malaria, one of the. There's the attitude. Yep. Yes. You can't even take care of your own people. Right. And this, you know, and and, and it's going to me. It's gone too far. Not. And look at one of the top-rated sitcoms in America right now, which is Modern Family. Mm -hmm. A gay couple raising a Korean baby because they're a gay couple. They're very wealthy. One is a lawyer. Mm -hmm. They come from a wealthy family that live in California, and they couldn't go through the adoption process because they're gay. I, it's Yes, it's a situation comedy, so you're supposed to be like, oh, it's a cute little gay couple raising a child. It's still but when reality. You look at it, it's still right? reality. That's the reality. It that is that reality. A wealthy couple who are in a loving relationship can't go through the regular American adoption process because of all of the hypocrisy and all of the discrimination. Mm -hmm. I was going to say hatred, mm -hmm. but. So, how can we say we don't have problems in this country? Because we definitely do. And, and, and who said, the, who said we the, didn't have well, problems? These, these extreme, <laughs> these extreme <laughs> conservatives. I would disagree with that who, person. These <laughs> cons, the extreme uh, conservatives like Santorum, they don't, don't want to hear that. They just don't want to hear that. They're not open minded at all to reality that exists today. They are conservatives. That's the right. definition. That's the only definition. Right. That's the definition. American family, man, wife. Uh, yeah, man and wife. Two and a half children, picket fence, but they don't see the reality that exists beyond that white picket fence, which is the family on welfare, or yeah. the happily mm -hmm. same-sex couple, the happily would like to be married same-sex mm -hmm. couple. And you know why same-sex couples would make great parents? Because they are they don't have the option of a, a pregnancy scare. Right, they yeah, want they to have, have that child yeah, right, because yeah. they adopted that yeah. child, so they clearly that's a wanted and, and child. And you got to realize. Here, especially here in America, as well as, as abroad, but especially here in America, the, the laws are so strict how they look into your private lives and everything else, your medical, before you even do the adoption. It's, it's not an easy thing. Right. That if there was a gay couple that would, would not be suited for it, they would be discovered so fast. So that's not what the problem is. It's the mentality of some of these people up here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Same thing as Planned Parenthood. You would think when people like Santorum – that that's all they do is do abortions. Right. That's the narrative among conservatives. And you have a lot of is, is poor they're, women they're that are using that for their health clinic besides abortion. Oh, sure. Then again, as, as liberal and independents, maybe we're wrong. Maybe the ones that are so steadfast in the belief that everybody is equal, maybe God doesn't really hate have homosexuals. Well, I, need a liberal. <laughs> I mean, I'll have to find out when I'm dead. <laughs> right, I'm, right. Yeah. I mean, I have other reasons to go to hell, but I'm neither liberal <laughs> that's the or, main or, one. Or, or, or conservative. I'm really uh, uh People back in my home, they call me the liberated conservative. The because, liberated conservative. Because you never know which way I'm going to go. I think my Reality. my favorite word to describe the, the liberals is progressive. Mm -hmm. Because you're yeah. seeing, you're, you're progressing towards a better future. Uh, so when I listen to, to talk radio in the morning, it's progressive talk radio. I like that word. Mm -hmm. It shows, mm -hmm. a, it's like the whole MSNBC campaign to, yeah. to lean forward. It's a progressive. And movement. how do you describe the opposite? 
I think conservative describes it pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I've mentioned this on, on this show and on Others. Let It Large mm -hmm. that we are going backwards. We're, we are. Yeah, well, we're clearly, though, the we're Republican, returning to a time where... The Republican Party is certainly going backwards. Yes. Very yes. much The thing so. is, will the American people wake up or will they allow it and wait too late for them to back up? I'll be honest. I mm. think we're too distracted. I think we're too distracted with the the thousands of of cable channels that we have, mm -hmm. the apps, all of the technology. We have all this information coming in, but we're not doing anything to process it. What do we do? We sign a blog. So we we're, we are, write, type our our status on Facebook, or mm -hmm. I agree, or I like yeah. this. So are you saying we're becoming lazy in our own thinking, and we're allowing other people to think I, for us? I or? think I think we're we're. We're, we're thinkers. We're, that way? we're not doers. We're, there, we're yes, not doers in yes. the, the... I mean, look at the people of Wisconsin. 900,000 people signed a petition to recall Governor Walker. I don't see that happening on a countrywide level. That type of... I would have signed that petition. I, I don't want to say unanimity, right. because it wouldn't be unanimous, but uh, even a majority of Americans getting together... Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I would have signed that petition. Putting, or yeah. putting aside differences. Yes, yes. Would you have signed that petition? I would. I would. Chris? Mm -hmm. I would have definitely signed Oh, to recall after, Scott Walker? After what happened, yeah. yes. yes. I, will, I will say this, though. I, you know, I sometimes feel that way, too. I sometimes get very discouraged. And I think I've always said that the, the greatest domestic threat to our liberty in this country is apathy. But then I, what, what makes me feel better, though, is then when something like the Occupy movement happens, for example. And I see all these people saying, wait a minute, something's wrong, and we're going to speak up about it. Granted, they don't necessarily clearly define their message and whatnot or, or what the end game is because they're still figuring that out. But even when I see I, – I love seeing protesters. I love – even when it's people I don't necessarily agree with, like some of these Tea Partiers it's, I don't agree it's, with. It's but I love right. seeing them protest. They're right. Yes, I love seeing people getting out and saying, you know, we don't like the way this is going, and we're going to speak up about it. And when I see that, it makes me feel better, and it makes me think, okay – Maybe we're not so apathetic. Maybe, yep. maybe we are going to be okay. But Matt, we live in a world today where, where our elected officials, by changing our constitutional rights and taking away some of our rights, what they're saying is, we don't want you to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. We'll decide for you. Right. And that's why you need, we need, as Americans, we need to wake up. Because if we don't, they're going to be our thinkers. And we're going to be in a sad situation. Right. I think by the people, for the people went out the door long time yeah. ago, yeah. long and before our generation. But it's even worse now. It needs to be, and we need to start going back to that stuff. Yeah. Well, our, our Congress is bought and paid for. It's, There's no uh, question about that. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, who has the and, money. And how many times so have we walked into a, to a voting booth and not really knowing the candidate, just seeing the letter D or R next to their name? Right. Oh, I'm going to draw that line. Right. There it is. Well, New Hampshire is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a great example for that. 18 years ago, the Democrats and Republicans got together in, in, in Concord and said, our biggest danger is not each other. It's the independents. They're growing. Mm -hmm. And so they said, to stop them, we'll pass a state law. But you cannot count a ballot unless you belong to a party. Well, that's been changed in the last year because I won an election as yes. an independent and they can't change, change the Constitution. But the point is... But during the primary, you we, can't run as an independent you, because we all had to go in and say, are you going to be right. voting Democrat or Republican today? Because once you're done, we'll put you back as unregistered. Not in the city. Because our city's local elections right. is nonpartisan, that's how I got it changed. Right. But in the state, you're right, I could not have changed it that way. And, but it only goes to prove a point that they are so... They so much had their own agendas Mm -hmm. That when they see each other not being the ones that's going to change the agenda, but actually somebody else on the outside, we the independents. It didn't matter to them that you've never committed a crime and you're a good citizen. If you don't belong to one of us, you're just not part of society. Right. It's wrong. It's not the America that our men and women are fighting for our freedoms, as right. far as I'm concerned. I agree. And by the way, Gwen, uh, I know we're going a little bit over, but I, I want to okay. say, because you're from uh, Maine, and uh, I saw a poll recently that uh, a Senate poll, Angus King, who was governor of Maine, 
I don't think he is currently, correct? As, as, no, as, but as, he was, as an independent. He was the first independent governor, which means a lot to the three of us because we're all independents. Mm -hmm. um, the first independent governor in the country, now running for the U.S. Senate because Olympia Snow is leaving. Yeah. And I saw a poll, and I don't remember who the other two, I don't remember who the Democrat and the Republican are who are running for their party's nomination for that Senate seat. But Angus King is ahead by quite a bit. He was a good governor. Was he? he was, See, yeah. I don't know much about Angus governor. King, but I just think it's so damn cool that he was the first independent governor in the state. And now, I saw that poll just last night. He is very far ahead of both uh, the Republican and Democrat running for that Senate seat well, in that Maine poll. Well, Maine is not any so. different than New Hampshire or the rest of the country. They are now more undeclared registered voters who wanted the independents than they are any of the other two parties. Yeah. And eventually... Which is great. Eventually, it's going to pick up. Yeah. yeah. And it's picking up and nationally. We oh, we definitely we do. need that. We, we need do, people to think we, for themselves. I think we mentioned this on Friday's show where the country is, is going into a more moderate, unregistered, independent way. We, yes. The Congress right. keeps going shorter and shorter. That moderate right. vote. We are so divided in. that it's the independent. Most people who become independents who used to belong to a party. I mean, people. some people say, the parties may tell you, well, only the new people who registered decide to register as independent. That's not true. A lot of people say, I'm tired of the Democrat Party, and I'm tired of the Republican Party. I'm going to change my vote to undeclared. They do that for a reason, because the parties are so split amongst themselves right. that they're saying, this is not, this is not my agenda. That, that, right. that moderate line is paper thin it's in the House and yeah. Congress. But oh, yeah. you look That's at the right. country, so we've got to start right. putting these independents into office. And I think it's going to happen. Or it put is. The, the it moderate, put the, the more moderate Republicans and Democrats into office. If you can find them. Right. <laughs> well, you take here in That's New Hampshire, 44% yeah. of the registered voters are registered undeclared. I didn't know it was that high. It's that high. I do now. know it's up to 40% now in nationally. In national. Wow. Yeah, which that is, is huge. That is unbelievable. The most well, ever in that history. That definitely worries the parties. Yes, it does, and it should. Will they wake up uh, and, and recognize that? I don't know. I mean, I'm a former Democrat, and I'll tell you what, they, it just got too liberal for me. So well, I belong to both parties in my life. And you know what? Really? I'll never go back to neither of them. They're just, they too much have their own personal agendas that's not always in the people's best effort, best interest. And they won't change their mind. They're so stubborn. Right. And that's both parties. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree. Well, on that note, I, I guess we'll wrap up. Uh, guys, this has been great. Thank you for... Uh, being here for the third edition of the uh, Matt Connerton Unleashed Television Edition, now weekly, 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on QCNews.com. I have of course, to ask you, are you, are you going to stop your Sunday one? No, no, I'll continue that as and well. what time is that one? That one, I'm glad you brought that up, Glenn. That is 7 p.m. Eastern Time here on uh, IPMNation.com, the, uh, the live uh, radio edition of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we have the Express Edition, the 30-minute podcast, every Tuesday and Thursday. Oh, too much math. So too there's, much math. Uh, there's a hell of a lot of me. It. Now we know why he's first. Yep. That's, and Norman that's Friends right. and Rock, Paper, Hand, or Grenades on Wednesdays. I'm everywhere. Friday I'm, nights of we let it large gone global. And, and, yes. and I always thought you didn't have a full-time job, but he does. So what do you put all the time? I don't sleep much. And he's got a girlfriend. So how do you get a life? <laughs> they keep it dirty in the chat room, that's how. That's, that's right. Uh Actually, there's two of me. There's me, and there's my evil twin, Tam, who fills in when I can't. Uh, actually, for all you know, I, which can, do you I can be my evil twin. It's true. Which do you prefer? Which do I prefer? Well, I can't tell you that. You're so good. I don't want to give away which one I am. <laughs> or I could just be a hologram. You never know. Then you're right. Oh, yeah, he is. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! See? Camera Look, I'm card. carrying his head! <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much, guys. Uh, you, I appreciate this thanks a lot. And uh, I will see you all again next week. There will also be an audio podcast of tonight's show if you want to download it, put it on your iPod or, or whatnot, what have you. Uh, Glenn is going to uh, fulfill his engineering duties He's as he uh, gets us double signed off. Tonight. Double duties tonight. So thank you, Glenn. Thank Absolutely. Thank you, Chris, for being here. Uh, don't forget, we'll let it large Friday nights here at uh, the QCNews.com studio, as well as on IPMNation.com Friday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Chris is uh, on verbal ejaculation Sunday nights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern with his host, uh, his co-host, uh, Dan Randlett. Also here and in the QC News studio. Absolutely, yeah, right, uh, right in the next room there, in fact. And uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. Good night. Hey, this is Studio G. What? Oh, this is Studio... I've just been told this is Studio G, and I don't know why it's called that, but I'm going to assume it's because I'm a dope, dope G, yo. I was going to say Studio G for Glenn. Oh, Yours it's Studio G for Glenn, creative. yes. Okay.
All right. <laughs> I'm being told to sign off. So uh, thanks, everybody. See you next week. Good night.